Hi, I'm Dave Ingebretson. Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. And as we often do today, Leroy, we've got a real mixed bag for the viewers. We're going to start out with a special version of the pheasant tail nymph. This one's called the flashback pheasant tail nymph. And it definitely flashes. And it flashes. <laughs> and then we're going to do the little brown trout streamer. Mm -hmm. And then a brand new fly to everybody, one I came up with myself called the beacon ant. So tell us about the uh, flashback nymph. Uh, nymph the pheasant tail out. flashback nymph. We'll use the standard old Chinese pheasant tail for the tail, the body, and the legs. It'll have a peacock curl for the thorax, and then when we get the flash back, it, there's a pearl flash of boo. I'll use copper wire for a ribbing and a standard six-aught black tying thread. Now I'll take a, a uh, 2X long. This is a size 12. And of course, this to me, that's a really big yeah, pheasant tail. It is, pheasant tails uh, can be tied down you know, 18, from 20 and 18, yeah. and a lot of them are tied very small, but the flashback, I think, uh, it's generally a little bigger, but... Well, and it, it's easier to see on now the Now, you were camera. telling me that, that this is an exceptionally good fly in the lakes. I've heard a lot of people talk about this uh, fly in lakes. Uh, I, I uh, hear I've about never it being used it on the, oh, the Kootenai and the Missouri rivers. Oh, really? Okay. But uh, I think it's probably good either, either for rivers or lakes. Now, what I've done, I just cut a small clump of that turkey tail, turkey, pheasant tail fibers off. I'm going to tie that in. I'm going to leave it a little bit on the short side for the tail. Now, I'm not going to cut those butt sections off. That's going to become my body material. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll take a piece of this copper wire. This will rib. Uh, pheasant tail is really not a real durable material, and this will definitely help the durability mm -hmm. of this fly. And then we'll take a few strands of this flashaboo. This is where the fly gets its name flashback nymph it will have a real flashback when you see this fold over and i've seen those tied with various colors too uh for like the I've flash you the, mean yeah oh, i've seen blue? it with a blue flashback mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. now i'll go ahead and get my tying thread out of the way back up to the thorax area and then i'm going to just start wrapping this pheasant tail. And again, I'm going to take one wrap behind this material so that that rib and all doesn't come off the back. Oh, static is really hard today on that flashaboo. Now I'll wind this body material forward. Lost one strand. I'm going to have to go back and clip it off. You can see where this would be easier to tie on a smaller hook. You wouldn't have to wrap that pheasant tail back so far. Now I'll clip those butts off. I'm going to fold the wing case over the flashback section. Now you call that the wing case, but that's the part well, that goes over the, the body. Well, the body, yes. The flashback, yeah. Yeah, I'm used to folding it over and calling it a wing case, and yeah. that's definitely not the case. I'm going to save those and tie them in for the... I hope that wasn't a pun. It wasn't a pun, no. Now I'm going to reverse wrap this copper wire. That will definitely give this body a whole lot more durability. Oh, yeah. yeah. And tie it down. And I hate to cut that copper wire with my scissors. I'll well, a little trick that I always do it. when I do have to cut something like that with my scissors is I go way in Very close to back, the jaws yeah. and save the tips. But I just uh, wear out the back of the scissors first. I hate first. to do it. Now for the thorax area, we'll get three or four sections or strands of peacock curl. And again, I always tie them in by the tip. Lay that down and tie it. Now I'm going to come back again with this flashaboo. Now I wanted a little bit more going over that thorax area, so I'm going to double it. Mm -hmm. And that may be so too that's much, why but you, we'll see well, what that's happens. That's why you don't just use the same that went over the back, you want a little more of it. Well, yeah, I think it just gives a little bit better appearance. Yeah, I think you're right. Now here comes the peacock curl. 
need a little sponge with some water on it here to keep all that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around my tying thread, make a little rope of it like we do. Yeah, that's a good comment you made about having a little sponge there with water on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of people, you go up and just wet your fingers on your mouth, and, and when you stop and realize all this stuff <laughs> you're working with, and where some of that stuff has been. and You don't working, know oh, what's man. happened with it, that's uh, right. And we've all done it. I do it constantly when uh, I'm dubbing What especially. I do when I need my fingers a little, uh, uh, my fingers tend to get dry. Of uh -huh. course, I use hand lotion and stuff, but uh, when I'm working with materials, I keep a little container it's called finger moistener. It's things like uh, banker tellers oh, use yeah, to okay. moisten With their fingers for counting bills. It? Well, no, this just comes in a little, uh, oh, I've seen it in little plastic boxes or little round containers. Oh, and, okay. and I keep it on my desk and I just take the top off and get my fingers and on there. there and that really, uh, really fixes up my fingers very, very well. Now I folded that wing case over. I have it tied down. Now I want just another small, two small sections. I'll do them one at a time of this pheasant tail which will become the legs. And you're going to put it on like I call a mustache uh, No, hackle, this will be or? on either side. Yeah, that's what I call the mustache hackle. Oh, okay. I, I was saying the other day, uh, I talking to somebody and saying that when I put it underneath, I call it a beard hackle. Okay. If I put it out the sides, I call it a mustache hackle. You call it a mustache, okay. Hackle. And of course, if I wrap it, I call it a collar hackle. So this is, this is my mustache hackle. All right. It'll clump out each side. And I'll go ahead and tie this one down. And I didn't get the right length, but that's no problem because all you have to do is pull on it then. I'll wrap back over. Then I'll go ahead and clip these off. And then we'll put a small whip finish on. And there's a flashback pheasant tail nymph. You can definitely see a real flash to it. Body material, we'll use a pheasant tail for the tail and body material. We we'll use the pearl flashaboo for the back and the wing case. Peacock hurl for the thorax. This next fly is called the little brown trout streamer. And this was a fly that was developed as part of a streamer series by Sam Slaymaker in Pennsylvania. And I'm not exactly sure when he did this. I have the feeling it was in the late 50s sometime, but I wouldn't swear to that. But what Sam did is he realized that trout were cannibalistic and will eat their own young. So he developed a series, a little brown trout, a little brook trout, and well, a little rainbow little trout, trout, and a little rainbow trout. One guy, had done, them one guy did them all, oh, really? and what he did, from what I understand, is he encased an actual baby uh, a fry in a prismatic piece of plastic, and then he would turn the prism to separate out the colors, oh, no. and that's how he developed the color sequence for the fly itself. And if you look at the little brown trout and the little rainbow trout and the little brook trout, they have the color sequence mm -hmm. that you would see in the natural mm -hmm. insect. Mm -hmm. So these are very effective flies, especially in streams where there's natural trout reproduction. So tell us what we're going to use to well, tie the little brown trout. These colors will definitely look like a brown trout oh, yeah. with the spots I have. Absolutely. Okay, for a tail, we're going to use a feather from a, a body feather from a Chinese pheasant. The body material itself will be a white yarn or a cream colored yarn. The ribbing will be an oval gold tinsel. And then two different colored bucktails, a yellow and an orange, of which the brown trout definitely have. Yeah. Uh, we'll use a natural gray squirrel, I mean a red fox squirrel, and jungle cock for the cheeks. Now that's a very optional state. Now, a lot of people don't have the jungle cock. Yeah. But, and then a standard six-aught uh, black thread. Might say about the jungle cock, that of course is to represent the eye of the fish, yes. which is quite prominent. Yes. But without jungle cock, you can use a number of different substitutes and make your own. The pheasant, the pheasant uh, church feathers. Church feathers from a pheasant, and you can even put a little drop of lacquer on you for bet. the color. You bet. Uh, you can use guinea with a spot. There's a well, number of things you can do. I hadn't thought of that, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, I have a, a six aught, I mean a, a, a size six, 4X long streamer hook okay. in the vise. And again, this can be tied in several different sizes, but a, a six is a good, uh, good, good all round representation. You can go to four, you can go to eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll dress the shank like we always do, and then I'll take this uh, pheasant body, 
feather. I'm going to pull just a little bit off just to get it out of the way. Now there are a lot of different body feathers. You could use the, what we call the church window, but this mm -hmm. is kind of off towards the shoulder. It's tan with a little black, black on the end. Black tip, yeah. And if you tie it in and then pull it slightly forward, it pulls it all together. And we want and it makes short. A good tail. Yeah, we want it short Should be anyway. Short. Yeah. So I'll just take a couple of wraps and pull on it. Mm -hmm. There you can see it did move together real nicely. Yeah. And I'll trim that off. I'm going to leave a little bit here so I definitely won't have a lump. I'll tie in a section of this gold wire, a gold oval gold tinsel for the ribbing. And then we'll tie in the yarn. Now this yarn is a four strand. You could make it four strand if you wanted. The, the body would be considerably larger then. I want to strip this down and only take two of the strands. And that's sort of a creamy, off-white, tannish yeah. cream, yeah. I think the original pattern called for pure white, but I just like the looks of that creamy body, I think, a little better. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to lay this body material longer than normal. I'm not going to clip it off. That way I can wrap it down and have a nice, smooth section to go over there. It's always a good idea to have a good, smooth underbody and avoid yes. the bumps. Now I'll wrap behind my ribbing and I'll get it out of the way and just start forward. Now you can see there's virtually no lump back there at the back where I tied that body material in at all. Now I'm coming up to the front section where I'm going to need to be tying on this several layers of wing material. Then we'll tie a small section of orange bucktail. And interestingly enough, you know, uh, sometimes when you have a multicolored uh, bucktail wing, you want to mm -hmm. keep the color separated. But here's a case where you don't necessarily want to do that. The, yeah. You like the colors to kind of blend together. I'll put this in the stacker. It, sometimes bucktail doesn't want to stack very well. But we'll put it in and see what happens. If it doesn't, I'm not going to worry about it. Now the yellow will go in first. I think I said orange when I said I picked it mm. up, but it's definitely yellow. Well, if you stop and think about it, this is the natural progression of colors in a brown trout. Mm -hmm. You know, from that mm -hmm. creamy belly to the orange, to the uh, to the yellow, to the orange, to the brown, and it's it's perfectly natural. And I like this orange. I really like uh -huh. this orange in that fly. Now, I'm not going to worry about evening that. They're not stacking together very well anyway. This hair is just so I have long. A hard, I have a hard time stacking bucktail. Oh, yeah, I never do. It's I, so long. It just yeah, doesn't. No. I pull out the odd fibers and mm -hmm. then tie it on. And I'll keep that on top. But it's important, I think, for the viewers to see what small clumps you're using. It is. Uh, because the normal tendency for everyone is to use too much. And not only does that make the wing too heavy, but then you have a humongous, big, bulky mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. Now I'm using just natural uh, red fox squirrel tail. And again, I'm not going to use very much of it. And if at you all. don't have that, uh, but do have a, a dyed brown dyed. bucktail, uh, would be fine too. In fact, I, I was thinking earlier, the only thing you'd have to do is take a white bucktail, take the brown take out the of brown the center, out of it, yeah. it would work very sure. well. Sure. Oh, you know what I forgot? You'd probably I didn't put my rib. rib. <laughs> I well, didn't, even, that's I didn't think right. of it either. I'll just stand this wing up and well, come you know, on forward. This is good for, to show people how to save mistakes. Oh, sure. Uh, and I think it's probably the first time I've ever seen you make a mistake ever. Uh, and I appreciate you saying yeah, that. Yeah, I, I know <laughs> it certainly <laughs> takes me aback. Well, <laughs> there it is. Now that'll work out. Yeah, very see well. how nicely that you saved that fly. Didn't come out didn't, bad at didn't all. Do a, have a problem. Then I'll lay this brown on top. But don't try that at home. Do it right the first Do time. Do it right, <laughs> yeah. It makes it a whole lot simpler. It saves you a lot of grief from your tying partner. That's for sure. Now I'm going to take a little bit of rubber base cement and put on those sections. It will really help bind everything together. I'll just force it into those butts on all three of those colors. And of course, if you haven't made any of that rubber base cement or don't have any available, just use head cement. Mm -hmm. That would work. Sure. There's the, now I'll get the jungle cock. Now, one thing I didn't know till oh, just a very 
a few years ago. These are not called feathers. They're called nails. They're called nails. And I had yeah. no idea yeah. what people were talking about when they talk about jungle cock nails. I could well, not I understand. I'm not sure, but I think it probably comes from fingernails. If that you could look be. at it, it really looks like a fingernail. That I never thought be. about it before right now, but uh, off the top of my head, it sure sounds good right. to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll strip a little bit of that off. I'm going to lay it in on the side opposite me. Now the trick, and I suppose you'll do this, is once you make a couple of turns, then pull it slightly forward, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. lays it down flat. Mm -hmm. So you don't have it just projecting out to the side. You just make a couple of turns, pull it slightly forward to the length you want, and that lays it right down and uh, flat and against I'll the I'll lay one on my side. And again, a couple of quick wraps. Now, you know, sometimes people have jungle over. cock nails that are split. Mm -hmm. uh, right on the hide, they're mm -hmm. split. And you can save those if you pull the feather out and before you use it, take either head cement or the rubber base cement and put a drop on each side and just stroke pull it through it with down. your finger. Sure. And uh, you just glue that together and what is bas basically a, a very poor quality cape can all of a sudden mm -hmm. uh, yield lots of very mm -hmm. good feathers. Sometimes they'll be split once, sometimes there'll be three or four. And you can glue them oh, right I've together. I've never seen them split out. Oh often. yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. I've got huh. some that are very bad, but you can save them. And I'll put a, a whip finish on here. Broke my thread, but I had a good whip finish there anyway. And then I'll put a little head cement on it. I really like to head cement. I, well, I head cement all my flies. Yeah. But I like to head cement, especially the streamers. It, it gives that real nice shiny. Well, I oftentimes uh, will, will let it dry and then put another coat second on. Second coat, yes, yeah. I do too. I've got a thing. I just hang them up on a strip of bolster mm -hmm. wood on a shelf mm -hmm. and uh, and then do that. Well, that ought to complete that head cement. There's a little brown trout streamer. We use a tail of a pheasant body feather. The rib is gold oval tinsel. Body is, is a cream yarn. And we have bucktail of yellow and orange, brown squirrel tail on top, and then the optional step of jungle cock eyes. You know, Leroy, I really like tying terrestrial patterns. Uh, and in a lot of parts of the country, once your major mayfly hatches are over, terrestrials is what keeps you going through the season. And we're talking about ants and beetles and grasshoppers Hoppers. and crickets and uh, any of these land insects that find their way into the water and trout like them. And I think two of my, well, I can't say, I was going to say two of my favorites were ants and beetles, but then you got to talk about hoppers. But mm -hmm. at any rate, uh, one of my favorites is certainly a little ant pattern. I've had extremely good days with ants. But they're normally hard but to see. But they're hard to see, and yeah. especially for me with my yeah. eyes, they're hard to see. Well, even mine. So I, mean, I developed what I've called my beacon ant. That okay. was the first one, and now I've developed that into a series, a beacon series, and we'll talk about that when we go on. But mm -hmm. basically what we're going to do is we're going to tie a high visibility ant. Okay. The beacon ant. And it could be tied in a lot of colors, a dark mm -hmm. brown, a oh, whatever. Oh yeah, rusty brown, we'll brown, brown a, sure. a black tonight. I'll use a black hackle for the legs. We'll use a black dubbing for the two uh, body humps. And there's your high-vis material, uh, really extremely easy to see. Comes in different colors also. And we'll use a standard black 6 aught tying thread. And I'll put a size 14 hook in the vise. And these can be tied, you know, from 22 to 10s. Oh, on down, yes. You have a great big carpenter big ants carpenter or termites ants. and, and the oh, winds yeah. Blow, the wind blows them in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'll dress just the front third of this hook shank Mentally, right now. Mentally, you want to divide the hook shank into, into thirds. Into thirds. The and front the front third is for the front hump of the ant, the back third is for the rear hump, and right. the middle third is to be kept open right. for the turns of hackle. Now I'll clump a sec a clump. I'll clip a section of this high clip a vis. Clump. Clip a clump. Now you can use any off. high visibility material. Uh, you can use poly yarn. You can mm -hmm. use uh, almost anything. I used a loose material like a dubbing. It was called high vis, or no, mm -hmm. it was called vis float. Uh, this stuff is the same material as vis float, but it's put on a uh, cord. It's called body fur. And apparently they wrap saltwater flies out of it and wrap that oh, for the body. Wrap the whole thing. But when I saw okay. it, I saw it's a whole string of bo little posts. It's sure. a lifetime supply of posts. Sure. Uh, comes in a variety of fluorescent colors, and some people like white. I don't like white because of all the no. flecks of foam on, no, foam right. on the river. 
to, for me, the, by far the easiest color to see is fluorescent chartreuse. Now, a lot of people also, they can see the orange. Better. See the orange. Yeah. I would say experiment with orange and chartreuse and uh, see which one works best. And, you know, light conditions vary that so That's much. That's true. Whatever the, wherever the sun is. But by All and right. large, the green works best for me this year. I have the, the post on, and now I'm going to start wrapping this front ball. And I'm just going around and around the... And the post. You want to keep that dubbing sparse on the yes. thread so you've got it control and make a nice tight body. Yes. Uh, that's so critical and we keep saying it over and over because it is critical. Now there's my front third all dubbed off nice. And leave the post long for now. We'll yeah, trim it we'll later. Yeah, we'll trim it later when I get the Of course it doesn't on. matter. It could be trimmed now too. It isn't critical at this point. And now I'll put a little more dubbing on for that rear third or the rear hump. And this does divide this ant out real well. When you do divide it off in sections, I mm -hmm. guess is what I'm trying yeah, to well say. Yeah, it's just a concept mentally looking at thirds. Mm -hmm. And I came up with that to solve the problem for people that tend to put the two humps so close together that by the time you wrap hackle in, you've lost the segmented effect of the mm -hmm. ant body. I'm going to put just a little bit more in there. And now you can see if I'd have really used a whole lot of dubbing, it would not be tight on the hook. It just won't bind well, itself down. Well, you don't, can't down. control the shape. No. You can't taper those humps because the humps are larger in the middle and tapered at either mm -hmm. side like a real ant. Mm -hmm. And now I'm to that front section, or the center section. I'll take a hackle, a dry fly quality hackle, tie it in place, and I'm going to keep that right in the center right. of the center third. And two or three wraps is really all you that need. Three is plenty. Yeah, yeah, you don't. I often use two, but three is, is fine. And you, I might say you can also change this to a flying ant by putting a couple of little done hackle point wings in oh, there. Oh, sure. You bet. Then I'm going to whip finish behind that front post, which makes it come out real easy that way. I've already filled the gap of the eye when I put the front mm -hmm. one on. And now I'm going to trim this wing post. You can trim it. You may have to experiment with uh, lengths that you want to trim it. You can then always just shorten push it. Down. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, tie it, and if you can see it, trim it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, uh, I'm now tying a number of different flies in what I call my beacon series. For mm -hmm. example, uh, little poly wing spinners that sit flush in the surface oh, film. Sure. You With put a little post vertical between yeah. the wings and you can see it. Because you can't hardly see the uh, wings. I've got anyway. an adult damselfly that's the same way. A little vertical post and uh -huh. that lays down flush uh -huh. in the film. Killer on smallmouth bass and trout oh, that are bad. feeding on adult damsels. Uh, so any fly that you tie and have a hard time seeing, mm -hmm. try to think about how you could put that post in there. You bet. And of course it's a standard to use that as a post and make a parachute dry mm -hmm. out of it. But there's your beacon ant. It has the gray, uh, black dubbing for both humps. It has a black hackle in the center for legs. And it has whatever color bright material you want on the front for visibility. All right, in this show then, we started out by tying the flashback pheasant tail nymph, mm -hmm. just a special version of a very popular nymph. You bet. Then we tied Sam Slaymaker's little brown trout, part Same. of his series on little brown trout, little rainbow trout, Good little brook trout. Good, Good looking, looking fly. Good looking fly. And now we finished up with my beacon ant and talked mm -hmm. about putting beacons on uh, mm -hmm. other flies. So it gives you a, a little uh, something to think about, something that you can do uh, to improve the visibility of your Variety flies, in time. how you can change some patterns like the flashback sure. nymph. You and bet. that's it for this time. Uh, we've enjoyed it. We hope you have. We hope you've learned a few things, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Dave and Leroy have produced two 90-minute videos covering new and exciting tips on how to make your fly tying better and more effective. They introduce you to everything you need as a beginner and demonstrate helpful techniques for intermediate tires. Fly Tying Techniques Volumes 1 and 2 are available by calling 1-800-883-0124. Cost of each video is $28.95 plus shipping and handling, or get the two-volume set for just $52.95. 
You can also order the programs in this series. Each 90-minute videotape includes three programs for just $22.95, plus shipping and handling. To order Fly Tying, the Angler's Art Videos and Techniques tapes, call 1-800-883-0124.